This is the Dog Savant Podcast with your host, Brett Endes. Hello and welcome to the Dog Savant Podcast. Today is episode 58. My name is Brett Endes. I'm your host. I'm a professional dog trainer based here in Los Angeles. I created this podcast to share my accumulated knowledge and experience as a professional dog trainer, uh, to share with you, a dog owner who may not be getting quality dog training where you live, uh, or if you've been failed by the purely positive movement. If you're a client, if you'd like to supplement the work that we do together and learn more about who your trainer is, uh, and just anyone who wants to learn to understand their dog more, learn what it's like to be a professional dog trainer, what the life is of someone here in Los Angeles doing what I do, working with the clientele that I work with, I want to share all that. Um, to help me share all that, I need you to help me. Uh, I always get on you. I want to see more subscribers, ratings, reviews, uh, sharing. Just let people know about this. That's how people find the show. Um, I am not looking to monetize this. Um, one day I will offer other things when we build up more of a listener base so that I can do workshops and have a book for you. But uh, I just want to share the info and knowing that you're listening and that it's helping you is really what motivates me. Uh, so please keep telling me about your stories. Let me know your questions. Send them into dogtrainingla at gmail.com. I'll do my best to answer them on the podcast or in person. And uh, if you need dog training in the Los Angeles area, or have any questions related to it, my website is dogtrainingla.com. Um, and thank you so much. So um, what are we gonna talk about today? You know, uh, I thought about it. I told you in the last episode, sometimes it's challenging to get the information out there on a regular basis, but I wanna make sure I commit to you and give you new and uh, helpful content. So I'm gonna talk today about carding. Uh, carding is having dogs pull you around, similar to when you have a, you know, the sled dogs, the Iditarod racers, where they pull you on a, on a sled. Um, and why am, am I, I thought maybe after, you know, I haven't done a case like that in a couple of years, but why did I decide to do a podcast about it? Well, a lot of you know that I commented on a popular dog trainer who's well known amongst other trainers and you know has a little bit of an internet presence uh, the guy with the hat I'm done saying names and I retrain a lot of dogs that he's worked with because we're in the same area location market and I just had a comment that I wasn't too impressed I didn't defame him I said hey look I think the guy's giving a good message he's very astute I think he's very aware of how the human dog relationship can be undermined by a certain type of thinking and he articulates it quite well and I think a lot of the techniques and tools he uses I do agree with some things I just haven't again been impressed with nonetheless when I commented on that just you know I was feeling that way that day one of someone who I guess he works with or he's affiliated with decided to just want to lambast me in response instead of saying hey that's your experience um, maybe that's just a few client you know just something a little more defending himself but not just laying in with a lambast and that's you know mr savant you haven't written a book some guy who just has dogs cart him around bel-air has a lot to say about someone else well i see 30 to 40 dogs a week i've done this for 25 probably more now years and i had one recent paid case for carding now i do it as, as a extra thing i've done with some dogs pets of mine friends dogs but I'm not a carding dog trainer. I wouldn't be able to survive doing that. I have to be a problem behavior specialist and obedience guy. Uh, otherwise, I don't think many people more than once every five years are gonna want to pay me good money to teach your dogs to pull them around, whether it be Bel Air, Belize, Bolivia. Um, it's just not gonna happen. Yet, I understand carding. I've educated myself on it. I practice it enough so I can teach it. Um, so how about that? I'm gonna do this one just for you. Um, I think your name was Ashley Schmentek or something. I'll say your name because you're, you're a jerk. Um, the way you commented. And oh, just, just to uh, qualify and clarify, I use the term dog savant. A, you need a name for a business that lets people kind of know you, the essence of what you do. And I have a pretty good knack for dogs. And being a savant, I, I, you know, I don't think I'm greater than anything, but I ch I'm challenged with a lot of elements of everyday life that people, other people aren't by. Um, I have Asperger's syndrome. I'm not trying to make you feel bad. It is what it is. And where I'm most comfortable and where I understand the dynamics of what's going on in a social or, you know, a real life situation is when I'm working with clients and their dogs and giving them the information that helps them. So, you know, it's kind of funny how I can have anxiety trying to, you know, f fill out a shopping list to go to the supermarket, but I go to a client's home and for two hours I can sit and guide them through a process that's going to help them resolve their dog's behavior. So yeah, I am Mr. Savant. Um, I think I, you know, explain how when you just, you know, paint me as a one-trick pony and you haven't taken the time to see what I really do, that's just ignorance on your part. But um, 
I think you just might have a little bit of a love affair for the guy with the hat, and he's pretty handsome, so I don't blame you. All right, I'm spoken for, though. I have a girlfriend who I love dearly, and uh, sorry, you can't have me, buddy. Go, 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 go look for the guy with the hat. He may be open to a new relation. All right, anyway, jokes aside, let's talk about carding. Okay, so carding. As much as I talk about harnesses not being helpful for walking, harnesses are the basis of how dogs are going to learn to pull. It triggers an opposition reflex. It's also, of course, more safe for a dog to pull against the front of their chest. And you don't just use some harness you go get at the pet shop. You go get a properly fitted harness. There's some companies, and it's, it's, it's eluding me now, but if you just need the name of some of them, just email me, or, and I'll, I'll post it. I'll send it to you. But there's a wool check or voice check something would work. So if you look it up, they have like a lot of Bernie's Mountain Dogs in their in their website, but they make great custom harnesses. Now, the stuff isn't cheap, right? You might be able to find like a lesser alternative than a custom, something that's just size fitted for your dog, but um, you want to start with that. You want to start conditioning the dog. Some dogs can pull an empty cart or a light sled right away. Some dogs, you just have to create, put the yoke on them, which is the thing that it had. You have to get a well-made cart too, okay? It's thing. You can't just let them pull your, 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 your what is the, the red flyer wagon. You have to get a real cart that has the proper steering equipment, uh, whether it be for riding or just pulling, you know, for fun or utility, you need something that's the right equipment and this is gonna require an investment. At first, maybe you just get the harness, you can get the yoke or just connect to the harness just some string and on the either side, you can just drag something light or just keep building the resistance because when the do dogs feel resistance if you start with too much weight or back pull too soon they're going to just shut down and then you're done and you want to just build this enthusiasm and when you give them the command to cart which any command you want um to use they should go for it and get motivated to keep moving until you woe them to slow them down or you stop them to halt or you turn them or whatever the command is you should be able to control them from the back when they're up front but you need that motivation and that's where the using that up the thing that i tell people you should not be using when you're walking your goddamn dogs you should be using to teach your dog to pull stuff that's what it's for that opposition reflex all right and you need the right harness okay so anyway i don't want to get too on a rant i did that last episode um so you have that, you build it. Some dogs are just more apt for it. Some dogs, you know, their body type is more appropriate. Um, when I, the dogs that I've taught and I have videos, you know, showing me do it part of the process, these are Husky Malamute mixes. So they're just, they're just right in it. They're built for it. Their, their genetics are made for this. They love it. It's just makes them more, more, more content dogs overall, and it's great exercise. Um, so you want to build that. Then you start attaching the card, right? And then still, you keep it empty, you keep it light, and you want to, like any training you know, sessions or teaching, you keep it short, brief, and enthusiastic. So as the dog can go longer, faster, take on more weight, more distractions around them while they're in, you know, carding and being focused on the task at hand, you build it. Every day you do five, 10 minutes. You can do a couple sessions a day if the dogs are motivated and really just keep luring them more and more as you do it so that they can feel that they, when they hear that command, they're one track minded to just pull, pull, pull and everything related to that is that mode, right? And it could take months. The dogs you see me pulling effortlessly through Beverly Hills and I can command them to take me wherever I want, that took a good three to four months to even get where they pull me without distractions. You know, and then I'd have to start practicing in the environments that are more challenging, keeping them on a straight path like a sidewalk, right? These are all things, if you're gonna be doing it in an urban environment, you have to keep building for the dog. So, you know, if you get the gist of it, it's really just about building, it's about the right equipment, it's about getting that motivation, and then once you get the dog to pull, what you usually will do is have somebody lead them or someone in front to kind of keep them ahead, also for safety, because if you start sitting on a cart, if you're doing that type of carting, um, you don't want them taken off, and now you're just, it's really dangerous. I had one moment once where it was a little scary and I had abandoned ship and it was uh, lucky I had a helper that could get that had the dogs nearby we could grab a, a leash um, but yeah you want to just you know get to the point where when you do have them free and you're on your own you have confidence your dogs you can work together as a team and you know these commands have been conditioned and proved and built to the point where you have consistent proficiency. So what do you do? You start teaching, like I said before, the woe command, which is to slow down. Because sometimes you wanna keep moving, but you wanna slow down. And after you can kinda, of, it's like a horse. You pull back on the reins, and they learn woe as an association, and you should do that without a person on there. You do it, you can even have a training collar on them and walk them while they're pulling the cart and start using it like you'd implement heel command and walking training to slow down while you're you know, changing your speed. Um, then you do a stop, which would be to just stop and pause when they hear a command. Again, you can use stop, whoa, faster, slower, whatever works. It's just be consistent and make that a clear association and build upon it. Um, 
you know, and then you want to do turns, which I find for me with my limited experience is a little bit more challenging, but you can do right and left. You just have to steer them. And again, you do it with somebody hand guiding them, you know, as regular walking would be while they're pulling it. And then you add it to where you're commanding from the back. And with time and practice, you get where they can do it. Just one-on-one -on -one with you and the dogs up front pulling on the car. Um, weight, right? So dogs build stamina. Sometimes you want to go light, not just to build their, their abilities, but once you get them pulling proficiently, you want to slowly, what I like to do is add, you know, sandbags or something that's a little bit of like this dead weight that would simulate a person or heavier loads and build it. They'll get stronger chest muscles. You just don't want to stress them or overload them more than what they're ready for. But it's amazing. You can get your dogs to be so athletic if you take the time. And now with that, you also want to make sure they're getting proper supplementation. So they should be getting a good uh, high, high, uh, high powered, I guess, uh, powdered multivitamin. I like Nupro. Anything on that level is great. You also want to get a glucosamine supplement. These large dogs do good if you lubricate their joints and keep everything flexing properly. I like Lycoflex. It's a good high power glucosamine. My guy Bowie's on it, although he's not a carter. He's an active senior dog and he's doing great. Um, and a big part of it is because we keep him healthy, proper nutrition, proper supplementation. Um, you know, taking off days when you're doing more strenuous activity, doing walks on your off days or to warm your dog up before you. It's just like human exercise. What I don't, what I'm surprised by is not enough people are talking about getting a dog on a good training regimen and getting them strong and athletically, you know, um, to their optimum level. Um, so, you know, all that, aside from carding, it's just good for any dog. Or if your dog's old, you want to keep them moving. I wouldn't recommend starting carding with a senior dog. But if your dog's young, healthy, you know, of age, go for it. I think it's a great activity to combine. If you live in an area where it snows, you can go do it with a real sled. I only wish, I have to, I'm, I'm stuck with wheels because I'm in Southern California. But uh, if you're up and where it snows, I'm gonna be back in Colorado more often soon. Um, I'm probably gonna do a, some sled dog work. It'd be so fun, so fun. It's so fun. Get pulled by, you know, and of course you get the dummies who see it and they'll say, oh, that's mean and abusive. Well, we've already gauged how much weight their limit is to pull and they're having a blast. When they see me pull out that carding equipment, these clients of mine that I got time to practice with, which I'm really grateful for because they actually paid me to put the time in to really learn how to understand and teach a dog to do carding. Um, they're just so happy whenever I'd show up because they know what it meant. And then when I pulled the equipment out, it was on. So again, it's a misinterpretation. Like I talked about in the last episode, like the lady with the collar decides to stop us in our tracks and tell us how to train dogs out of her ignorance. Um, you'll get that, but your dogs will love it if you do it the right way. Okay, so that was kind of motivational version of a carding episode. Um, to all you carding enthusiasts who do it like for real and you're professionals and you're, you're real, you know, you do this for like real, it's your, your thing. Um, I know I'm probably not using the proper terminology. I know you probably teach in a different way. If I had the time to demonstrate, there would be a little bit more steps that I would show you as I'd be explaining it. But I just wanted to get it out in a podcast and I am doing it for stream of consciousness on the fly. I don't have notes. I'm just kind of getting ideas and saying them. But I wanted to give it the gist of it and the concept of what it is. And I wanted to respond to someone who, if they think I'm an expert carter, let me let, let, me let them you know, judge my knowledge base of that dog training subject matter. Okay, so... Let's wind down here. That was my gaslight. We're ready to stop and get gas, and I'm ready to end the podcast. So uh, thank you for listening. Again, please send in your questions, dogtrainingla at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and other places. Um, you know, like on social media. Go on my Instagram, at the dog savant, T-H-E-D-O-G-S-A-V-N-T, V-A-N-T. And my website, dogtrainingla at gmail.com. You can contact me there with questions, more info about me, links to my social media. And if you're in the Los Angeles, San Fernando Valley area and you need dog training, feel free to contact me. I'm very happy to help. Uh, thanks again, guys. Train your dog. Get out there. And if you start doing some carding, I would love to see those videos. Have a great day, guys.